don't want to complain though. Last time we crossed the border, it was actually very easy. We finally had like a the world's most sane border guard. And uh, she was like, where are you going? And I said the name of the city. She said, why? I said to visit my wife's family. And then she said, any alcohol or tobacco in the car? And I said, no. And then she said, have a nice day. And I was like, yo, I didn't know this is like a vision of what it could be like. That was like when I was at Subway uh, and while my sandwich was being toasted, instead of me and the sandwich artist just awkwardly looking at each other, uh, she said, how's your day going so far? I was like, what? You can say that? This is a vision of what customer service could be like in a, in a utopia? And I said, it's pretty good. How about you? And she said, yeah, good. And I was like, whoa, dude, this is crazy. Definitely want this. Definitely want this. No, I didn't get fined when we went into the Nexus line, even though our baby didn't have a Nexus. The dude really just was having like a power trip. I know, I, I, we got a lot of recycled stories, so I apologize, but again, having a life that you actually like enjoy in your home country is like the ultimate anti-anxiety medication. Because he was going in. He was saying stuff like, uh, are you taking this seriously? And I said, yeah, I'm taking this seriously. And he was like, well, it seems like you don't really care. And I was like, well, I do care. I guess I, I didn't say this next part, but in my head, I was like, I apologize for having a deep voice. I apologize for not like, I don't know, crying because I made an administrative mistake or whatever. And then he was like, well, like, you know, I could turn you around at the border and send you home. And I was, in my head, again, like outwardly, I was like, please don't. But inwardly, I was like, oh no, send me back to my fucking house with my family. Do I need a lawyer? Like, it's literally, it's like a 45 minute drive away. What do you want me to do? Please, sir, please let me get into Blaine, Washington so I can buy some Tillamook cheddar cheese. Please, please. Just relax, dude. Don't you have bigger problems? You watch the news lately? My baby doesn't have a nexus. It's fine. You know, you, there's a way that you could be like, you know, hey, just for future reference, don't use this line unless everybody in the car has a nexus. That's a reasonable statement that would make me feel embarrassed that I didn't think about that and thought that my baby was an exception because the concept of interviewing a two-year-old toddler to see if they can get a nexus pass is ridiculous to me. But to, when you go in like so over the top like that, it's just like... I mean, you, you're just going, you're not even doing the Bond cop, you're just doing the bad cop. Nexus is like TSA pre-check for Canada and the US. So like, basically it's, uh, it creates a two-tier system of citizenry where if you pay $100, you can get into a shorter line when you cross the border and save yourself like half an hour a trip. Kind of like a Disney Fast Pass. I know you guys are a big fan of that. Private roads. Well, I would. It, it's also. I mean, I hate to say it, but it is amazing at the airport. Like sometimes you get at the airport, there's like a 250 person line for security. Then you flash your Nexus card and they take you to like a private lane. It's not even like an exclusive thing. Like anybody can get it. I, well, I, I don't know. I guess like anybody without a criminal record can get it. But like they make you feel like you're, you're so exclusive. There's no minimum age for the Nexus. Yeah, no, he's crazy. And like the, I just, I, I understand that they're trained to be assholes because they, uh, I don't know, we're trying to like root out drug traffickers or human traffickers and stuff like that. I feel like it's a very reasonable thing to assume that a, a four month old infant wouldn't need a Nexus because you had, it requires an interview at a at an in-person facility. It's crazy. You, what, you got a, like a little baby that can't even talk. They also deal with the same mistakes all the time. 
Well, I'm sure that's hard for them. Won't, won't somebody think of the border agent? Maybe that's not what you meant, but that's the way I chose to take it. So is your baby going to do the interview? Well, when they owe it, like, they, they were closed for, like, two years because of COVID, and they couldn't even do the Nexus interviews unless you, like, flew to Montreal. But you know, I, again, maybe it's good that I'm not, like, a, a in a position of power as a world leader. Because I said it before, like, I feel like rather than, um, rather than border agents being assholes to nice people, in order to ensure that they catch like the one out of 10,000 people that are trying to smuggle cocaine across the border or whatever. We should run the risk of the opposite. Border agents being nice to everybody and accidentally being too nice to the drug traffickers. Because I'm just saying this like... You, they're real hard asses at the border. For what I assume are largely, you know, drug and smuggling based reasons. People are still, they're like doing more drugs than ever. I think you might be kind of like ass at your job. So can you at least like be nice? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but like whatever, the, the current system that you're using is not working to the standards that I, I think it would have to work to in order to justify me being condescended to every time I try to bring some tourism dollars to your nation. It's just madness. I'm not asking, oh, Mr. Letourneau, welcome back to the United States of America. May I interest you in a sale at the premium outlets? But, like, just be, like, personable and, like, civil at least or whatever. Canada border agents were super rude. Dude, yeah, we. you can also, I'm not even making this, like, a US v. Canada thing. I had the same thing. There's a lot of, like... I've had some very annoying experiences with Canadian border agents, but I think the older I get, like, the more I realize that, like, at least with the Canadian border agents, like, without being too rude, what are they gonna do? Unless you broke the law, like, you're a citizen. I mean, I, I'm a citizen, I should say. So I, I, maybe it's flipped if you're if you're American. But whenever, like, the... Canadian border agents are kind of like, you know, short with me. In my head, I always just remind myself, is like, we both know you're going to let me in. I'm a citizen. You, you legally can't not let me in. They can arrest you for stupid answers? Those charges won't stick. They could ruin a, they could ruin a day or so. And I, again, this, maybe this is coming from a place of, of privilege. Um... But I have reached the point in my life, I'm almost like at a sovereign citizen level, where like anytime I go through the border and I know everything's on the up and up, I'm almost like, give me a reason. Go ahead, take me in a second, illegally charge me with something. I would make my damn day to drag this out in the legal system for the next 10 years. Like, and that's not rational at all, but that is how I feel. Today I fucked up post to, to TIFU by daring the Canadian border agents to detain me. It turns out they do have some uh, administrative powers. Who knew? But like, again, the US border guard, you could ruin my weekend by being like, we're not allowing you to enter the US today. And I would be like, well, that sucks. But like, I don't know what a Canadian border guard can really do to me when I'm returning to my country and I have like a passport and a record of my citizenship what are they gonna like you could be as big of a asshole as you want but I'm pretty sure in like you know at the end of the day I'm probably gonna be sleeping in my own bed you can waste my time what, what a, a Canadian governmental uh, entity wasting my time that's a new one cavity search honestly dude that's an open door right now so if, if I was ever going to get a cavity surge, now's the time, because trust me, there's nothing in there. What about obstruction? Well, that's the thing is, I'm actually, and this is probably why I've never had and may never have a problem, uh, like, in these situations. But I'm, like, a very compliant citizen. Like, I'm basically a sheep. 
when I go through the border, like I don't, I'm not nervous because I'm not trying to smuggle like, you know, 20 bottles of Jim Beam back when you're only allowed to take back six because you were there for 48 hours or whatever. I just like go to the country and like eat some food, sleep, and then come back the next day. So whenever they're like, you know, oh, what were you doing? Oh, what did you have for dinner? What was the side that went alongside the ribs that you had? I'm always like, dude, no matter, you're not gonna, you can trip me up, you know, you can catch me in like a speaking error or something like that. But at the same time, I mean, you, you could tear all the quarter panels off my car. You're not going to find anything. I don't even eat in here. You forgot the item room? I don't even worry about that anymore. The only thing that matters is angel rooms, man. You want me to go to the item, remove Curse of the Unknown or whatever it's called. I'm going for planetarium builds. I just feel like why... I don't know. I feel like I'm uh, Candide and everybody else is Dr. Pangloss. Same shit with the grocery store. I'm like, the grocery store gives you like 0.1% cash back, only redeemable on uh, whole wheat bread from a specific brand for one week out of the year. And I'm like, that shit sucks. Everybody else is like, well, it's better than nothing. I like to dream of a better world, man. They could have just given you nothing. Okay, I mean, I guess. Whole wheat bread is goaded? Not this whole wheat bread, man. Not this whole wheat bread. This is from Bimbo International. Let's all calm down and take a body break. With Hal Logan and Joanne McLeod. Here come the whole weed bread enjoyers to shit on the conversation. No, you're supposed to do... Um, it's the Monsters Inc. meme of all the monsters walking through the tunnel. And then the, the title is always like, Whole weed bread enjoyers on their way to add nothing to the conversation. You know what I'm talking about? You seen that one? Yes, yes. I've only seen the opera. Does Dr. Pangloss get syphilis in the book, Candide? Yes, he does. He gets syphilis and has to replace his uh, nose with a, like a brass nose. But he's still pocked. He's honestly like... You know, yeah, I don't have a nose anymore because of syphilis, but like, life's still pretty sick, Pog Poggy. Book of the Dead? Book of Belial? Monster Manuel? Satanic Bible? Okay, I do like a, a little Satanic Bible here. Yeah, sure, why not? Amazing, thank you. I love referencing one of the eight pieces of literature I read in freshman year English Lit. Or classics. Such as Antigone, uh, Oedipus Rex, Bartleby the Scrivener, Candide. I'm trying to think. Uh, Infinite Blood Bank? Help. Catch 22. We read that in the senior year of high school. We read um, one of the novella sections of the Brothers Karamazov. Or is, the, or is the Brothers Karamazov the novella section of War and Peace? I can, or Crime and Punishment. I can never remember. Both are true? That doesn't seem like that could be possible. Any true crime? I did not read any true crime in my English literature class. We did, we watched season two of Making a Murderer on movie day. That's a joke. That came out like 15 years after I graduated from university. Oh yes, I've, I read 1984 in 11th grade. Which is the year that the um, book was titled. 
That was actually 20 years after, but that's okay. I'm mad about 1984 because it actually is like an insanely good book. It sucks that it's um, become like co-opted as like the ultimate reference to any corporate policy that you don't like. Just give me the blood bag. Just take the blood bag, please. It's so mid. I didn't think it was mid, but maybe it's because when I read it in 11th grade, I was also listening to The Lonesome Crowded West over and over. Maybe I just actually like The Lonesome Crowded West. This is getting ridiculous, man. I don't care. At, at this point, it's a matter of principle. I'll stay here all day. You want to take me inside the secondary? Sure, let's go inside the secondary. Which item gives him health back? Um, it's called the hypercoagulation. I, I honestly did not remember what it did at all when I picked it up, but it, it triggered something in my brain that was like, this item is pretty good, I think. Fantastic. After all that, fantastic. Infinite money glitch. I do have a lot of money now. If only I could get a key. At least you have money. At least I have chicken. Only millennials will get this. What is infamous world of warcraft player said at least i have chicken careful it's a tough one leroy jenkins how did you know that are you a gamer are you a memer keep calm and leroy jenkins on It is an all-timer. This, this is a great video. Finally. Don't ruin this for them. It's all they have left. That meme is like 10.33 repeating, of course, years old. I don't know, dude. I think it's actually... I think it's like 18.33 repeating, of course, years old. That's got to be like a 2005 or 2004. I don't care if it's staged, okay? It's at least funny. There's a lot of staged content that's just, like, not good at all. I'm, I'm over this idea that, like, for something to be funny, it has to be, like, an authentic accident or something. If you can come up with a funny idea and execute on it, then more power to you. I'm not going to take that away from you. Like, did you, for, here's a great example of this, okay? In the psychotic uh, period known as the 2008 election campaign, a viral video came out, um, which was a parody, a seemingly sincere parody of the song It's Raining Men, except it was called It's Raining McCain. And the, the weather girls were singing, you know, God bless John McCain, he's a Vietnam veteran too. He went down to Vietnam. It, it's gonna start raining McCain. It's raining McCain. Hallelujah, it's raining McCain. Amen. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna make sure I get absolutely John McCain. Anyway, so I, um, I loved this video because I thought, Wow, how self-unaware do you have to be to make and release this? And then, like years later, I was reading an interview with H. John Benjamin. And he was like, Oh yeah, I did this video like a long time ago called It's Raining McCain. And we did it as like a funny sort of like parody of where politics was at. But we released it as if it was sincere. And I was like, you're a damn... Genius, man. You had me completely fooled. So that was staged. But I think that because I was tricked by it, I have to acknowledge that it's, it's Jester's immunity. 
It's, it's no longer like, oh, somebody made this and I am making fun of them. Instead, it's, it's just a joke. It's just become a joke. And I gotta respect that. I think that was formative for me. For, for entering into the idea of, you know, who cares if something's staged as long as it's funny. Like, everything on uh, SNL is staged but not funny. Everything on, well, most things on I Think You Should Leave are staged but humorous. I did love the, there's, there's so many like I Think You Should Leave sports themed accounts, which, you know, you can think of that what you will, but I find it funny because anytime anyone references I Think You Should Leave, I am forced to laugh. Um, but I loved when John Cooper, uh, the head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning, gave that press conference last night. And he came out and said, I can't really talk about it. I'm just so upset for all the guys in the room right now because that goal shouldn't have counted, but I can't explain why yet. And then he left. And then the I think you should leave NHL meme uh, tweet was like, I, what? I went over to ask about the rule. It was so good. I, I love a, a professional sports coach being, I can't talk, or saying, I can't talk right now. That last goal shouldn't have counted, but I'm unable to say more right now. Source dude, just trust me. What? We're going to be so early for that movie. This morning he said he overreacted. Okay, well, you know what? That's based. We, we love a self-reflecting king. I'm inclined to say base to that. By the key? You know what? Honestly, pretty good idea. You got that's you got you got your head screwed on straight. Buy everything? That's not even a shop. What am I doing here? I mean, I don't want to buy things that are bad just to buy them. Like I don't mom's purse. Yuck, like why don't you just you know buy this pill real quick? Yuck, dude. Tampa had seven players on the ice for the for the goal. Is that dude, that would be a great argument. If you think you're gonna get scored on, just empty your whole bench onto the ice. Uh excuse me, Gary Bettman. That goal against us shouldn't have counted because we had too many men on the ice. That's why he's he's getting nominated for the Jack Adams every year. I do remember, like in a, in a similar vein, I was playing hockey on an outdoor rink. I don't. know, I was like probably eight, with my dad and a, you know, it, 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 I, I basically grew up in like a Norman Rockwell painting. I don't want this garbage, dude. I don't want it. Um, so like in my, the village I grew up in, there was a, an, an outdoor ice rink that was just like maintained by the community. So every Saturday and Sunday, people would get there and play like pickup hockey and it would be, uh, you know, it, there'd be grown adults, there would be little kids, there'd be like every age in between. So you just kind of like, you know, it was just for fun. I remember, uh... Someone got past me, and they were going to score. I mean, it was open net. Nobody's playing goalie. They were going to score. So I just took my stick and, like, slid it across the ice. Like, like curling. I was, like, like a spear across the ice. And then the stick slid across the ice and knocked the dude's, uh, the puck off of his stick so he couldn't score. And I was so excited. I was like, why don't people do that play all the time in real hockey? And then it turns out that um, if you do that in real hockey, it's an automatic penalty shot, which with an empty uh, net is an automatic goal. So, but it was very ingenious, ingenuitive. It's funny, we do it in open hockey. 
I, as long as everybody agrees, I guess it's okay. Sure. I only have eight items. This can't be good. Just don't get caught, forehead. I agree cool shit should be legal. Okay, this is possibly the most insane North American take of all time. But does anybody else, whenever they watch soccer, think that the penalty for handball is just like a little too high? Like, I get that handball is like a serious deal in, in football slash soccer. But like, it's like, a, it's like the murder of soccer. If you accidentally touch the ball with your wrist, everybody on the field goes, Aah! for like five minutes right in the referee's face. Like, I, the ball's moving fast out there, man. Isn't it like if you, if you get handball, it's an automatic red card or something like that? It just seems like, you know, accidentally, you'd, you'd end up getting a lot of handballs. No, it's not. Is it an automatic penalty? Only if the handball denied a goal. You just don't know the rules, you're talking shit? Oh, I know handball is bad. And they don't treat it like basketball, where there's like a bunch of rules, but they don't enforce uh, half of them, like traveling and double dribbling. I don't even feel like handball is like that much of an advantage. Like, have you seen how fast a ball travels when you kick it at full speed versus how fast it would travel if you punched it? Like, it doesn't seem like it would help you that much. I think they should let them use the hands a little bit. Hand is OP for defense. Well, I think that's what they need then. Soccer's been way too offensive for too long. Most NA take ever. Okay, well, like... I think, and I actually like soccer. I don't watch a lot of it, but I was into it at the turn of the decade, you know, the 2010s. I watched a lot of Toronto FC as they were making their way through the CONCACAF Champions League playing teams in Panama that played in like a high school stadium and then coming back for their home leg at uh, BMO Field. So I, I appreciate soccer. I will say though, they gotta do something about the diving, man. It's just, I understand why it happens, but it's just so much. The, the advantage you get from diving and faking an injury is is so high. I don't know what you can do about it. I'm, I'm just idly bringing up a complaint without even a proposed solution at all. But it's just so annoying. Like when a team is up 1-0, it's the second half. You know, you're at the 70th minute. And then somebody falls down and is like, ah, get the stretcher, get the stretcher, get the stretcher. And then, like, the stretcher comes out and they're shooting the Dr. Scholl's foot deodorant onto their knee, like, shh. They're chugging, like, two bottles of Gatorade while they sit on the field while the clock ticks up. And then, then they put them on the stretcher and they cart them off the field and they're getting ready to play again. And then the guy is just standing up on the edge of the field, like, jumping up and down and stuff like that. And you're like, what the? You're not even injured, man. You're faking it. Or were you? Maybe you just got healed. I don't know what's in the spray bottle, but... The health spray? Dude, the Metamist! This FIFA has had Metamist technology for like 20 years now. Is it, call it liquid cocaine. 50% Goldschlager, 50% Jägermeister. Kids are spraying it on their ankles to induce a healing factor. Thank God for golden bombs, man. If I was a Peter Fonda movie right now, I would be on golden bombs. For real. Huge minus two? Yeah, but are you not surprised that I know one of the actors from On Golden Pond? I've never seen it. 
skipped item room again. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty damn true. <laughs> oh, man. You're absolutely right. My mistake. I did get like four luck upgrades on this floor, though. Dude, our planetariums are going to go off on, on Shoal. Oh, man. Anyway. I don't make a habit of skipping multiple item rooms per f per run, okay? Just this one, I got a little lost in the sauce. It's been known to happen. I can't even afford to take some of this shit, man. Okay, I'm going to take it all. It's actually not that bad. Peter Fonda isn't in on Golden Pond. That's Henry Fonda. Oh, son of a bitch. After all that. Perfect order as well. What can I say? No, I haven't actually been watching the Stanley Cup Finals. I've just been, like, you know, passively following the, the storylines. I don't care who wins. I think it's, it's a good story either way. You know, the Avalanche are an amazing team. Probably the best team in the NHL this season. From a meritocratic standpoint, it, it would be justified if they win. Nazem Kadri coming back from injury um, and scoring the game-winning goal in the overtime last night. I mean, that's a great narrative. I do, and I, I hate to make this about the Leafs, but I do also love that no matter who wins, the Leafs fans will be, like, more disappointed. Because... If the Avs win and Kadri plays like a, a serious role, which he has in the playoff run so far, then they gave up on him and he went on to win a Stanley Cup elsewhere. Or if Tampa Bay wins, they yet again lost to a, a team that ended up winning the Stanley Cup. Like they were, they might have been one goal away from actually being in that position themselves. It's just humorous. I'm not even upset at Leafs fans. It's just humorous, okay? Corey Perry's about to lose two finals in a row. Or three finals in a row. I don't know, man. Like, here's the thing. I mean, the Avs are in an amazing spot. Tampa, they never say die. I honestly thought the Leafs were going to close them out this year. And then, you know, when the Rangers were up 2-0, I was like, well, like, this is finally the end of the Tampa magic. And then the, the Lightning just dummied them four games in a row. Like, I'm not saying I would bet on Tampa right now, but I, I certainly wouldn't feel comfortable counting them out. Are you not a Leafs fan? Um, I'm not. Uh, but, like, I don't really... It's just sports. I don't really care. And all, I'm a Canucks fan, so, like, my team is worse. But to be honest with you, it's kind of based to have to root for a bad team and chirp a good team. Because what are they going to say to hurt you? Like, I remember when I, I went to the Canucks-Leafs game in Vancouver this year. Uh, the Canucks won because Thatcher Demko made like 52 saves or something like that. And when I tweeted about it, a few Leafs fans got in my mentions. It's just banter, but they got in my mentions and said stuff like, yeah, well, at least we're going to enjoy the playoffs this year. Well, now you're in the playoffs. How would you say you enjoyed it? Would you say that your chirp uh, still holds or would you say that perhaps it, it backfired on you a little bit? A little question mark for you. I'm just asking for like a little bit of humility. Like your team is not in the sort of place right now where you should be impressed to make the playoffs. I mean, you've been like near the top of the NHL for like five years straight. The idea that like you're gonna chirp the Canucks for the fact that you're gonna lose in the first round yet again is just a little bit of, you know, self unawareness, I would say. By the way, this is the closest we, we've come to a loss in a long time. I'm, I'm a little nervous. Ah, never mind. One spirit hard. Son of a 
bitch. As a fellow Canadian, what universities have you heard of of these and what do you know about them? Um, Guelph, Brock, and Algoma. Okay. I know Guelph is a, a decent undergraduate institution with a strong environmental engineering uh, discipline. I have heard of Brock University, but could not tell you where it is. And Algoma makes... I, I feel like Algoma used to be called something else, and they've changed the name. Because I've never heard of it before. Did Algoma used to be called something else? I, I don't know why I'm expecting an immediate answer. This is like... It's pretty fringe knowledge. It's in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay, that would probably explain why I've not heard of it. I've never heard of it. The only Northern Ontario University I know of is, uh, is Lakehead. And Laurentian? But I'll be honest, even though I, was, I lived in Ontario for like... 20-something years? I'm basically like the, the worst kind of Ontario resident. Like the kind that every other Ontario resident hates. Like, anything that's, like, north of Barrie, I have no knowledge of. And I was going to say anything that's east of Ottawa, but I guess that's literally just uh, Quebec now. <laughs> you don't get too far east from Ottawa while maintaining still being in uh, Ontario, but... Well, yeah, but holes, holes in Quebec. One time in Hull. So Hull, the, the legal drinking age in Ontario is 19, and the legal drinking age in Quebec is 18. So, oftentimes, 18-year-old Ontarians will cross the border into Hull, which is the first town across the Ontario-Quebec border, in order to get legally drunk and then go home and sleep. Um... So this is this sets the stage of where I was at. I was 18. We went to Hull. I went to a bar where we sat outside on like Canadian tire deck chairs. And I was like, I'm a fidgety kid, you know, at, at that age at least. So I was um, leaning back on this chair. I was doing like the one-legged deck chair. You know what I mean? When you get like a plastic deck chair and you can lean back on one leg and balance and you can even kind of go like this a little bit you can kind of put in a little because there's a flexion on the plastic anyway um who would have thought after doing this for about 10 minutes the leg snapped off and i was like oh shit the bar is gonna make me pay for this deck chair so i just like moved the chair off to the side and then shoved the broken chair leg like, in my waistband and covered it up with my shirt <laughs> and paid my tab and walked out. And then I remember... This, this is a real story. I mean, it's not that, like, crazy. It's just sort of funny. After, right after that, we went to, like, a nightclub. And as soon as I got onto the dance floor, I pulled out the, the plastic, like, chair leg and was just holding it up in the in the club like yeah 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 and then security just came over to me and like grabbed it out of my hands and then i looked him in the face and he was like and i was like okay that makes a lot of sense but dude how cool would that have been i would be like the guy at the club with a chair leg holy cow People would have been like, whoa, what's that guy up to? He's got the chair leg. Hey, what are you up to, chair leg guy? Nothing much. Just being badass with my chair leg. Legendary moment. We still talk about chair leg guy. Just arrived, her chair leg guy was here. I knew it. I knew I heard people talking about me. I knew I made it into the cultural consciousness. I'm like the Kingstonian Xanta, but without all the really troubling allegations. 
So for the lore masters in chat, Xanta is um, a Toronto area street performer who um, wears a Santa hat and has no shirt on and is insanely jacked. And he would just like, you'd just see him on like the subway uh, or like outside of your school. And he would be talking to himself and like punching himself in the face and stuff like that. But then he would go down and do like 70 push-ups straight. He's kind of like, I get, he was sort of like a local, I don't know, like a folk hero. And then he's maybe on like the sex offender registry or something. Like, I, I don't really know. He fell from grace in a big way. Say it, he was a hero. I'm not going to say that he was a hero, especially after what I just said. Local lore people are the best. Dude, I mean, honest, every city's got them, right? Like, there's known, uh, known elements in Kingston, for sure. Vancouver's got some. Roller Girl. Several unicycle people I, I see now and then. Sometimes I'll go, like, two years without seeing unicycle people and then i'll see one of them like ripping it up mount pleasant on their unicycle like faster than somebody that's using a, a real bike and i'm like they're still they're still here they they made it through the pandemic opera guy i didn't realize so there's a guy in vancouver who walks down commercial drive just singing opera there was a thread like a month ago that was like has any has anybody seen Opera Guy lately? I'm worried about him. And I was like, let's see what's up with Opera Guy. And then uh, every single post was just about how much of an asshole he was. Opera, I fucking hate Opera Guy. He would always come into my coffee shop and ask for Diet Coke, and we would tell him that we don't have Diet Coke, and then he would go, fa la 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 And I'm like, D I didn't read, I thought he was just like a guy with, he had some quirks or something like that, but I guess he's going around like, uh, like, just kind of being a, an asshole to people. Shut that fuck up. My wife wanted to go to the opera for her birthday. Victoria has Darth Fiddler, a guy in a Darth Vader mask on a hoverboard who fiddles. It's crazy, man. Honestly, like, that's kind of annoying. But it's also, like, I feel like that's a vestige of what cities used to be like before they got, you know, condos got turned into um, unregulated bank accounts for the uber rich. And people, like, stopped living in cities and instead just treated them as, like, a savings account. Used to be chock full of crazy characters like that. Nowadays, there's, like, less crazy characters, more investors, and the crazy characters are actually, like, um, dangerous. They're not like Darth Vader on a hoverboard. It's like, oh yeah, watch out for that guy. He has a knife. That's knife guy. I think I told this before, but there's a guy like in our neighborhood. And I see him now and then. But like, he's, he's like on and he's off. Like there's some days I see him and he's just walking his dog. And he's like smiling. But then one time I was walking with my parents and he was blasting music on his bike and he was coming the other way on the bike lane. And he was like, that's right, baby. We're going to send all you guys back to your country. He was like, looking me dead in the face. We're going to send you back to your country where you belong. MAGA 2024, baby. MAGA 2024. And I was like, what the hell is going on with this? It's we're not even in America. And then I was like, that's really weird. And I was almost a little taken aback. Okay, I was like, oh my God, what's going on? And then later that day, I was on my patio and I just hear it coming from like a different, uh, from a, the, around the corner. And then I see him cross with his dog. He's going, we're going to fix this country. Trump's going to come in here and clean all this stuff up. And I was like, oh, he's, that's just his thing. That's just like what... Okay, so it went from like being scared to almost being a little bit more like sympathetic. I was like, okay. At first I was like, this guy's about to commit like, I don't know, like a crime or something. But now he's just become a character in the running cast of people that I 
that I see in my life. Guy who thinks he lives in America, I guess. But he's not always, and I've seen him, I don't know, maybe like five times. Three out of five times he's been spouting that stuff. Two out of five times, it looks like he's just been having a nice walk with his dog. So, I don't know. <laughs> Still not great, but... Uh... On average, yeah, 40% chance to not get yelled at. Uh when you walk by him. I mean, there's there's parts of the city where you would have a worse batting average than that, to be honest. I can live with that. Also, I know how this sounds. It sounds like I'm taking his side. But anytime I've... Uh, been subject to his rhetoric it's always been when i've like been on my own or walking with other adults son of a bitch um and anytime he's kept quiet around me it's been because i have my baby i think so i'm like at least he's uh at least he respects the sanctity of the father daughter walk the look on his face I mean, that one hurt, because that's supposed to be the easy part of the fight, man. Hey! We have 20 bombs. We could get a bunch of money. Okay, we could get fucking nothing. But this could give us a charge. Oh, my God. This could have given us a charge for um, our satanic Bible. A charge for our satanic Bible via charged penny. Ooh! Did you say you're going to the movies today? Uh, let me take you to the movie, shorty. I'm sure later on you will be my baby. Just sit down and just stay by my side. I've got the popcorn. I know what else you like. Let me take you to the movie, shorty. I'm sure later on you will be my baby. Just sit down and just stay by my side. I got the popcorn. I know what else you like. Hey, shorty, you're really looking nice. Let me take you to the movies because I know you like it. I don't remember the rest of the words, but that's more than I should know to begin with, probably. What is this? That's Let Me Take You To The Movies by Bangs. A very famous rapper from the late 2000s. I do, at the end of the first verse, he goes, Ha ha! Let me take you to the movies, shorty! <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't know. Sure, why not? It is a real song. I wouldn't expect you to understand. I think this is good. I think we made the right decision. Oh. Oof, 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 oof. oof. Sorry, we gotta just save your satanic Bible charges. We're off to the damn races. Speaking of the MAGA story, how many F. Trudeau flags do you see? Honestly, not that many. I, I hear it's widespread in um, parts of the country. Um, help, help me, don't kill me. Not that helpful. Uh... Every once in a while, like, I was getting bubble tea for Kate a couple of months ago, and there was a truck parked outside, and the truck just had, like, the most insane paint job on the doors I'd ever seen. It was, like, um, proud to be considered a member of the deplorable class of Canada 2022 or so, and I was just like, holy cow. This is just, I'm just trying to get some damn tea here or something like that, but this... Like, you've actually, like, turned your truck into a, into a billboard, which is, I mean, I, honestly, further than I'm willing to go, at least. 
I'm feeling okay on this run. I do see it now and then. I understand that this is going to sound like it's a, a, like a punchline or an own, but I swear to you it's my legitimate, genuine observation. The most F. Trudeau stickers I ever see is in the Wendy's parking lot. Like, I very rarely see them actually driving. But anytime I pass by, like, this one specific Wendy's, there's usually, like, one or two in the in the parking lot. So I don't know if it's, like, that's where the, the meetup happens or something like that. But... I know you're a truck lover. What's your favorite truck? I'm a big fan. Well, this is not a truck. But here's another tweet that I thought, it, it popped into my head the other day. Who the fuck drives a GMC Suburban? Have you seen the size of this vehicle? I do. If you, I just need to know why. It's too big for... It's too big to be practical, man. My uncle does. He transports construction equipment. Okay, your uncle... When I become Prime Minister, I'm not coming for his Suburban, okay? His Suburban can stay. He appears to have a genuine- Wait, no, he's not transporting construction equipment in his Suburban! It's like a closed cab stretch limousine. You know, he's not putting a... Uh, like a bulldozer in the back of that thing. It doesn't even make any sense. It's like a six door. It doesn't even have a bed What if you have like five kids I I would accept it kind of except I still just think you should get like a minivan or something with a you know a Foldable third row of seating or something like that like a suburban is so freaking huge. It's enormous. Yeah, can't you get sedans that seat seven these days? A Suburban might be my most hated vehicle on the road. I don't know if you can buy a GMC Suburban. My, my, and this is perhaps ignorant. My perception is that the only people who drive GMC Suburbans think that they're better than everybody else. And that's why they feel so much, so comfortable taking up so much damn room. What do you think about the Escalade? I, I feel the same thing. Um, the Escalade, a Hummer, GMC Suburban, like a Lincoln Navigator. They, to me, it just seems like a lot of, a lot of vehicles that are big for, for big sake. At least a Jeep has like, and, and you know, I've talked before about how I feel about Jeeps. People will be like, uh, you know, hey, my Jeep Liberty has amazing off-road potential. Oh, yeah? Where do you drive it mostly? Oh, uh, corner of Robson and Smythe. But at least, like, there's some utility there. But I feel like a Suburban and, like, all those other, like, huge SUVs are just big for big sake. At least a truck, like, in theory, there's some utility associated with it. So I do I get annoyed when I almost get monster trucked by like a lifted Dodge Ram on Highway 1? Yeah, but at least like while my skull was being crushed into my thoracic cavity, I would be like, yeah, but you never know when he might pick up like a bunch of soil from Home Depot. I can't really fault him for that. I would buy a Corolla if Sam Elliott did the ads. Dude, don't even get me started on the Dennis Leary ads. Did you I didn't know this. Did you know that uh, Dennis Leary and Bill Hicks were friends? And then Dennis Leary recorded an album, played it for Bill Hicks, and Bill Hicks said... Uh, Basically, you stole my whole act, including lifting several jokes, uh, like, literally wholesale. And then they ceased being friends. I had no idea. Though it does make sense, there are a lot of similarities between the Bill Hicks 
routines and, and Dennis Leary's entire personality. I got nothing against Dennis Leary necessarily. I just like... I just don't like the trucks that he does ads for, I guess. <laughs> and as a result, I brought up perhaps the most, uh, I don't know, the sorest moment for him in his entire life, which is maybe not that necessary. But anyway, um, it's a quick little slash marker. What was that, Isaac 3? We did it again. <laughs> 